we're back in here, man. Le we, piece de resistance. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> we got special guests in the building, man. Tonight, man, Ooh. go ahead and introduce yourself, man. Uh, what's up, everybody? I'm uh, DJ Clientel, you know, from uh, World Class Wrecking Crew. Yeah, man. That whole good thing, you know. Yeah, man. Straight legendary you know. shit. He said it like, eh, no you big know. deal. Yeah. <laughs> Straight some legendary shit right there, man. But, um, yes. Yeah, I, I wanted to ask, man, um, straight off top, it, in that time, like, there wasn't a bunch of people doing it, so how, how hard was it to get on at that time and become part of something legendary like that, though, but to become one of the ones that was recognized, you had to put a lot of work in to get there, right? Oh, yeah, for sure, man. You know, uh, being a pioneer or being at the vanguard, yeah, really man. the tip of the spear, um, you know, you get a lot of the headwind. And uh, what a lot of people don't know about, you know, back then in the, you know, the, the 80s is that we had to fight all kinds of forces, you know, coming from all sides. We had to fight, you know, the legit so-called musicians who didn't think that hip hop would last. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we had to fight the East Coast who looked at the West Coast like, you know, we were just a little bastard kids that didn't know what we were doing, you know, because yep. it was their thing, not our thing. Yeah. Right. And then we had the record industry who you know, had basically turned a blind eye to us. So we had to go to the people, you know, we had to go to the streets and, you know, we had to build our, you know, following and, and there was no Instagram, there was no uh, Facebook, you know, there was no Twitter. Yeah, so be there. we used our rubber soles and our feet, yep. you know, to walk the streets and take our, you know, records and stuff to the mom and pop shops and, and do little, you know, parks and, and dances and backyard boogies just to get known and just to get you know eventually put on so it wasn't it, it's not like now where you have a lot of marketing tools back then our marketing tools were just you know our, our will our skills and anything we had to do to sort of promote ourselves and make it happen and, and to, to legitimately um have a fan base from just word of mouth and and getting out there and grinding man there there's a lot to be said about that but that that is how it started for that and that that's one of the things that that i love about doing this show is sometimes we you know we do get younger artists we get younger crowd that, that do tune in and it's good to um sometimes they they can soak up some some knowledge from this show and i that's what i like yes. about it so yeah it's, i'm it's, glad you it's said scalable. That. it's scalable right because you know it's kind of like the same model you start off small in your own little circle your own community and you start building out your community from there and you know as you you know start to build bigger circles all these circles start to overlap and the next thing you know you're not just you know in your hood anymore you know now you're in your city then you're in you know your your county then you're in your region then you're in your state and then you're in your you know your country and next thing you know your stuff is all overseas so that's what you have to really build on think about scaling it up and uh, for us me personally i started out as a battle rapper so you know i would go anywhere and everywhere i could find a battle you know if i see cats huddled in a corner somewhere rapping each other i jump right in there at school i jump in there at the park i jump in there and i was at that time was honing my skills as an mc and I also was a DJ too because I started out in the crew with DJ Joe Cooley. It was me, him, oh, shit. a cat named New York Nick, and Shout another guy named George. Carlos. And then eventually uh, Crazy Tunes came along and joined us. Nice. And so did DJ Aladdin. So we were a crew, wow. you know, around Compton. And like I said, we were just battling everywhere and, and doing, you know, parties and dances and promoting ourselves, putting our little money together, you know, putting flyers out there, you know, buying turntables and equipment and just scaling it all up. And so, you know, we were just driven. And I heard somebody earlier say something about the passion and the love of it. And that's what really kept us going because it wasn't a lot of money, you know, back then. But we just believed in ourselves and we just believed in hip hop because it was our thing. You know, it wasn't what the older, older people were doing, you know, because they were still in the either disco or, you know, R&B or soul music. So we wanted to do something that was unique to us and that, you know, us as young people could, could, could really own and revolutionize ourselves. And the times were different then, so like I don't think that younger kids now understand the way that a record was made back then. Right, so, no, they don't. So you know, put them up on game a little bit about how. Yeah, it wasn't just on a computer hitting this button and this yeah, button. Yeah, yeah, you weren't just sitting at home and just you know programming some stuff and pulling some stuff down and then you know uploading it digitally. You know, you literally had to first go to like a uh, make a scratch you know copy of your song and like a 
like a little four track or demo studio, you know, because you had to save money. Because back then, you know, studio time was very expensive, like 150 bucks an hour. hour. So, you know, you, so you're not going to spend 10, 15 hours in the studio trying to do some stuff. So you go, to, you know, you do your demo, get your demo tight. Then you take that, you know, to the bigger studio. And you better know what you're doing by the time you get in there, because otherwise time is money. I so, mean, what would happen if you didn't like a song? You Man, know what I'm saying? Or, or, like, I mean, did it end up on yeah. the album anyways? Or thousand, like, how did that go? Well, listen, a thousand <laughs> things could go wrong. So, you know, you had to be talented. You had to hone your skills. You couldn't play around with it. You know, there was very little room for error. You mm -hmm. know, no, no ceiling really for mistakes. So that's why a lot of times when you see a lot of, the, you know, the, the 80s and 90s artists who were still in that mode, they knew what they were doing because you didn't have a lot of time to waste. No you know? choice, no option. Yeah, exactly, up. exactly. So... You go from there, then you'd have to take that master, you know, to a pressing plant. And then they would have to, you know, press up the vinyl. And once they press the vinyl, then you take it to the distributor and then they ship it out that way. And that's that's how we learned, you know, how to do everything in the music industry. So one, by the time we did actually eventually sign to major labels and stuff like that, we already knew what they were doing. You know, we they, yeah. couldn't, they couldn't, you know, trick us or fool us. You know, in terms of, you know, beating us on the money and stuff but, like but that. But the thing that you mentioned is you were honing your skills the whole time because there's a, yeah. there ain't nothing like that pressure of of having you, you did build the crowd and then you get them there and you have to rock the show. You better be like, ready. So, yeah, so yeah, yeah. from that pressure, like, the studio part becomes a little bit easier, man, because, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, was, yeah. I mean, I was known as a first take Jake. You know, I go, right. in, you know <laughs> uh, right. I go into the booth, I spit it one time, we're done. One hit you, know, or like, you ain't going to get no better than that, man. Don't do it again. Come on out of there next. Yeah. You know, that kind of thing. But, again, that saved a lot of time and it saved a lot of money. You know, but not everybody was like that. You know, and as, as technology grew, people got a little more comfortable with, you know, being able to spend a lot more time. And, you know, then you have all kinds of, you know... Um, apps and programs that you can use now to kind of fix the voice and fix the music and sort of you know cheat a little bit that's it's the way more i look the at engineer it. now yeah exactly and the producer exactly. now exactly. than it, it was the exactly. artist like before the plugins and that kind of stuff and then what rabbit was alluding to when he was saying you you already you get the crowd and then everybody's there and now you got to be ready to put on a full-on show yeah, that's and right. that's probably why the groups were larger yeah larger um plus there was a lot more, I would say, authentic showmanship. Because by the time, you know, you, you do something in the studio, all right, cool. It's hot, it's popping on the radio, cool. Now you got to go on tour. So you might be touring with anybody from Cameo to Run DMC to LL Cool J to, you know, Parliament Funkadelic. You know, it, it could be a mixture of people you're touring with to Climax. So your, your show had to compliment their show yes even if you're opening for them or whatever it is and if they're up there you know lighting the fire on the stage and you know playing the music and solo and doing all that you're like oh damn we got to be able to hang with that so right. we had to you know hone our skills and be able to put our show together and have showmanship and have it tight wow. so so obviously like um through all this that you've gone through and honing your skills and uh, from a battle artist to a D, I mean, but I mean both at the same time. But through all that time, um, you you continue to learn, obviously, because th this is what I'm getting to is that like the new stuff you're doing is like these are all these things combined is like putting together. I've seen you know movies together and, and a book, and which which we have here. But um, yes speak on that man it's like you you brought everything and that's what this is all about it's entertainment and that you know hip-hop was built on that but you i obviously from from the beginning stages kind of figured out a way to incorporate everything and you don't have to just be a rapper or just be a dj you can be a you could be an author you can be a you know a screenplay writer you know what i'm saying yes so let's bring them up to Absolutely. speed with the documentary first well, well, really see, quick if you can so well, that yeah. everyone knows cool yeah i mean it yeah it's a lot of things and i totally agree and and i always believe that you don't have to be a one you know one trick pony and um there are a lot of things that we as creatives can do and learn and always grow and it humbles me you know to be able to do that so i you know started out actually as an actor when i was younger you know uh one of my one of my uh, teachers in in uh, junior high school 
saw me walking up the, you know the hallway and she was like yeah we're doing this play next week and um we're gonna be rehearsing so maybe you know you can come by and audition for one of the parts i think it'd be perfect yeah. what she did know was I had a photogenic memory at that time, so I could look at something one time and be like, "All right, cool, I got Whoa. it." So she gave me the, you know, the the, the book, the uh, the playbook. Took it home that weekend, learned all the lines and everything, and came back that Monday. She, said, all right, we go to rehearsal. So it was it was kids there who like had been there for weeks. They were still struggling to learn their lines. Mm. So I hit it, boom, 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 did it. You know, and she was like, "How the hell?" You know, she didn't even know how I did that. But so we went, did the play. We won. Uh, uh, I won a you know best supporting actor trophy. You know, oh, the city nice. of Compton. And out of that, then I got into music and I got into rap. So the stage was kind of like a, a natural progression for me. And then I decided, well, you know, if I'm rapping, then I want to DJ too. So I started DJing with you know with Joe Cooley and those guys. That's started honing that. my skills there. And then when I got into actually making records and you know becoming a recording artist. With the Wrecking Crew with Dre and you know Yella and Cube and Lonzo and all those guys, I always looked at the business side too, and I said, "Well, we don't have to. You don't have to limit yourself or limit your possibilities. You can grow and learn because it's all entertainment, like you said, and it's all creativity." So I started writing more plays and and because I was doing most of the writing anyway for the group, and I started you know writing essays and writing books. And I wanted to finish college as well, so I made sure that I did that because I promised my mother because she was like, "This music stuff, I don't know if it's gonna work." I said, "Look, Salute. no matter what, I'll finish college. Don't worry. Trust me. It wasn't easy touring and having to do papers because the wow. professors they don't give a damn about you know. I mean, I gotta be in Philadelphia next week. All right, you got a ten-page paper due next week too, so you better get the paper done. So I'm on tour and I'm I'm writing you know papers and stuff while I'm on tour. So wow. I had to do what I had to do. Crazy. Long distance learning like yeah. a mother. Oh, absolutely, man. So I just learned you know how to be able to handle a lot of things and 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 be organized to the point where you know you don't let anything lapse. And that's how I started transitioning into you know, doing a lot of the other things with you know with directing and, and, and filmmaking and, and, and all of those. Now you know uh, a book. The so, book, y'all. Yeah. Speak on it, man. What, what, what's it about? Well, uh, you know, what can the people get? Yeah. So the title is you know DJ Clientele, the autobiography, essays, and writings of a uh, modern day Renaissance man. And some people think, well, Renaissance and modern day, how does that match? Well. Right. In every renaissance, after every renaissance, there's a revolution, there's a change. So I talk about, you know, my personal evolution, my personal change and how I evolved as a person. But I also, you know, go into telling some stories about some of the guys that I came up with, like Dre, Dr. Dre, and, you know, and Ice Cube, and DJ Yella, and Easy e and, and, and I tell some stories that people don't know. You know, there are, there are things about, you know, them that, um, you know, that weren't covered in, you know, straight out of Compton or, or, you know, other stuff that you hear. So I just wanted to make sure that the historical record was accurate, that, um, you know, nothing was marginalized or got sort of pushed to the side. Um, because, again, you can't tell everything in a two and a half hour movie. And I understand that. So I wanted to make sure. And I, actually, I was really inspired, too, by Ice Cube because he and I were having a conversation one day. And he said, man, I'm glad we did this movie now it opens the door for everybody else to tell their, their stories side too. Of that's it. dope yes. Yes. yeah so that's that's another reason why you know i decided to it's to almost like it a down. west coast bible the story yeah, in well, according yeah, to yeah, clientele yeah it definitely the book of, yeah it, it, yes, it, it fills in some gaps um it plugs in some you know some holes uh it tells the origin stories of of us of dre of cube and those guys and, and how we all really began truly you know started out again we weren't making a lot of money you know back then it was it was for the love of it we were truly hip-hop heads and we loved it and we had a passion for it and i'm proud of everything that they've done you know to this point hey we're Beautiful. blessed to uh you know have yella on the show years back right uh it was uh, man was it Maybe, a, I don't think it was a whole year. It was some months before Straight Outta Compton came out. Yeah. Well, it was when they finally agreed to film it. And right. and then uh, we, we were blessed to have him on the show. And at first he came with another one of the homies. He was going to come on real quick, but he, he opened up a little bit. And um, he told us on the show, it's coming, the movie's coming. It was right when they decided to make it. But it, it was cool to have him on because, man, I followed that whole movement growing up myself so it was dope and it, it's dope to have you on yes. telling 
telling the story as well, man. So I, yeah. I can't, re- I can't wait to read the book. I gotta read it. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's dope, man. And and uh, you know, I put a lot of you know heart and soul into it because again, I wanted people to really get a a, a better understanding of hip hop in on the West Coast, the origin story of it, and just sort of my journey, you know, as well. And I was smiling when you mentioned Yellow because um, I can't reveal too much, but. <laughs> He and I are working on a very special project right oh, now. Yeah. So, yeah, that's going to be dope. And it, you know, and it's funny because I'm, you know, 30 plus years later, you know, closer to those guys than I, than I am to a lot of my own family members. We're like brothers, you know, and uh, it's it's really an amazing, like I said, journey that we've all been on. You know, we've sort of operated together, then on our own separate tracks, then together and, and, and all that. But it's just all love, you know, for, for all of us. It's like, like. Uh, historical memories in hip hop that you guys have made, but the the thing that's crazy is the memories ain't done yet. Like you guys yeah, got more exactly. stuff to do. So that's, and that's actually, crazy. that's almost quoted word for word in the in the book. There, man, that's that's, that's dope that you would uh, say that because yeah, there's still a lot of story to tell. Um, there are a lot of things that um, you know we still have to do, but most importantly, um, and I and I can say this and speak for for all of us is that. We really, really do love and appreciate all of the, you know, the the, the feedback we've been getting, the just the uh, appreciation from people over the years who've listened to the music, who who rock with, you know, everything that we've been doing, um, and and it's just something that makes us it inspires us to even want to you know go higher and do more and be better examples you know for, for hip-hop for the culture especially dope about you is that when you're working on something you're interactive in the way that you break down the development of the project you keep people engaged throughout the process so that they can feel a part of the development of it and actually That's become dope. a part of it if they want Absolutely. um i remember you really helping me at a time when i was just deep deep in depression really struggling through a divorce and stuff like that and um you were working on your the documentary piece that you were talking about right and um having the opportunity to share that with your audience your followers and giving them an opportunity to have a stakehold in that um you know what i mean that's really an unconventional way of sharing a project not not very many people do that in terms of our subgenre well you know we the one of the things that we've done or at least me you know personally i've done in hip-hop is i've always wanted to connect to the people you do that and that's actually how i got started i you know the way i joined the wrecking crew was um i won a contest a rap contest and in fact the night that i was up there to be in the contest a friend of mine was supposed to rap with me but he flaked out on me that day oh. He was like, man, just go and do one of those routines, you know, you you do with Joe Cooley. Yeah. But what I noticed was that all the other MCs, when they got up, they were just talking about themselves. Yeah, baby, I got the cars, I got the Gucci watch, I got the feeler, I got... And I was like, wait a minute, man, this is about the people. They're not even engaging the crowd. Right. So as soon as I got up there, that's the first thing I did. Did the whole call and response, you know, walked that stage, got the crowd involved. And people were nuts over that. But that's what hip-hop truly is. That's what the culture right. is about. Because we have to really make a distinction between the rap business and hip hop culture. You know, hip hop culture is much bigger and way more sustainable than, you know, rap music itself because rap music has evolved and gone through many different iterations. Hip hop culture is is static. It stays, it's sustainable and it, you know, it incorporates the five elements and that's yes. why that's why hip hop has lasted so long. It's because every generation can get involved and and create something you know that even that that's new and exciting and different than the generation before I love hey, that it. that's fucking dope and it, you you brought it up at the at the beginning when we were talking is like one of the things you had to fight against is the fact that people thought hip-hop was just a fad yeah you know and and here's the thing like me personally growing up i had like with my own family i had to like them Defended, telling me right? yeah and i'm buying my my cassette tapes at the time and, and and bumping my shit and 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 they're telling me oh this shit ain't gonna last and and me being the smart ass kid that i was 
I told those people that were telling me, I said, they said the same thing about rock and roll. Yep. And and these are rock and roll fans I'm telling this to. That's right. right. And, and they right. had to witness the fact that hip hop kept going, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, because so. it was born out of the oppressive conditions of black, Latino, and Caucasian youth. And it was something that we made out of nothing. And it was ours. And we created it. And we were happy with that. And we were creating something more of a movement than it was just a fad you know yeah there were fad records that were popular because people would oh that's funny you know right but in reality there was a whole groundswell of things going on you know the break-in you know the DJing um you know the graffiti art all of that stuff was happening in conjunction with the music making and that's what that's what a lot of adults at first didn't understand and also it's true and, and one of the other things is like what you were saying is like some of my closest people to me to this day are people that I met somehow through hip hop and that's wow, that's, that's crazy dope. yeah you know what I'm saying because yeah. you mentioned like those are some yeah. of your closest people yeah. now. And, and now look at hip hop now where it is you cannot turn on the TV or, yeah. or look it's at a, you know a, a, very web, a web page without thing. hearing or seeing the influence of hip hop in everything that's being done and you guys brought up a really excellent point and I'm thankful that I didn't experience what Rabbit had to experience in his childhood my dad bought me Cypress Hill my dad bought me Kid Frost my dad showed me Psycho Realm you know what I'm saying so I Dope. hope that we are shout out to all those you name man those are my homies. right right <laughs> um I just hope that we are able in our age now and in, in our levels like the capacity of where you are to not alienate the younger generation not you know remove them from the ability to connect with us through hip-hop through music through the elements of hip-hop and actually say hey yo let me check out what you're listening to oh man that that's that's trippy you know what that reminds me of bone bone had that kind of style that's what's up hey check this out and actually connect those artists together that's one of the things that i've been working on is working with the younger 13 14 16 18 and 21 and bringing them and connecting them to the clientels connecting them to the micah nines um connecting them to those different producers so that we actually unify and solidify what hip-hop is supposed to be about yeah I, and i totally agree with that 100 percent. i mean it, it's it's our you know duty not just responsibility but our duty as the generations before to pass on that knowledge right. and that information and give them you know that impetus to continue to go mm -hmm. and grow but first understanding the foundation and where everything came from but also enhancing their own and i've never been you know that old crotchy dude go on oh, them kids i hate right it's all about hey how do we how do we help you to enhance the quality of what you're doing grow and really express yourself in the way that you want and that's one of the reasons why too i'm involved with the universal hip-hop museum which i uh, sit on the advisory board of that and we're building a museum for hip hop, I love it. by hip hop artists. I mean, we got people like you know Daddy O from Sessa Sonic, LL Cool J, Curtis Blow, um, you know Rakim, um, Nas. You know, uh, all these guys are sitting on the board to make sure that hip hop is preserved and the legend of hip hop is preserved, but also that hip hop for the new generation tells new stories. Yes, yeah, yeah. because it's going to be an interactive, innovative you know high-tech you know entity that's going to be built in the bronx because that's the birthplace of where we all recognize where the five elements Sedgwick. synthesize and came together but at the same time we're going to have satellite campuses all over you know from la to oakland to you know houston and places where hip-hop just sprouted up and, and you know and took over so we want to make sure again that you know just like the rock and roll hall of fame just like the blues hall of fame and you know all those other entities that jimmy hendrix experienced that hip-hop has its just place in nice. history and you know in in the world that's and that's what we're about that's a beautiful thing that preservation of hip-hop is yeah. so important yeah here at the b-side we really do absolutely honor and respect hip-hop and we we covet it and treat it as and, such. We, and, and we try to you know do what we were talking about is kind of bridge that gap because we got a, a mix of, of viewers and artists that come through the show. Definitely. And, you know, um, it's, it's dope to see some of them end up working together and stuff like that. So, hey, yeah, I just, I just, I just, I just hooked up with ear. two. 
two more guys I know I'm going to be working with soon. I love that. See? I'm looking oh, forward to that right for there. sure. For sure. Oh, yeah. Making connections. I'm so thankful we, you shared the book, but I do really hope that we could hear you on the ones and twos. I was just going to say, man, let's <laughs> well, let's play a quick intermission video and see who wants to judge. We're going to get some set on the turntables or Hello, something, some, man. Some. <laughs> Okay. Oh, that's oh. Fair. That's fair. We're, we're gonna we're gonna give him a we're, whole hour next time. We're, we're gonna, gonna figure we're gonna better. figure this out. But uh, yeah. I like what when I seen him, you know, pull up with his stuff. Like you got excited. He, yeah. I, I, no, no. He brought stuff, and then I go, hey. And he goes, you know, just in case. You just never know. You never know. I like that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's but what I it is. But I feel it though, because you wanna you have the whole intro. You're gonna yeah. take him somewhere. That's you got right. the crescendo. You're gonna hey, wow, let him Long. Do you DJ? <laughs> a, a little something. Yeah, I'm little learning. Something. I'm learning. Thank Shoot. you for that rain mixer, by the way. <laughs> yeah, there it is. Hey, yeah. hey, so where could they, uh, the best spots to get at you and check out, the, they can get the book and, and, and the movie. Is that is that one already dropped or is that Well, no, so what we're doing, what was a, wow, it's a few things. So with uh -huh. the book, um, they can get it. It's on Amazon now, DJ Clientele. Okay. Um, the autobiography, essays and writings of a modern day renaissance man. So go to Amazon and get it. They can go to my website, cli-n-tel.com. They can get it there. And also, um, so we're working on a couple of things. There's a movie uh, project that we're working on called Blaze and Amused. And um, that is a 420 friendly comedy, um, West Coast style, you know. And shout out to a few people. Y'all know who y'all are. Is working on that with me. Stan, the guitar man, is one of them. And people know Stan from playing on the uh, NWA, and NWA and all this, cuts yeah. and stuff like that. Um, and my man, you know, shout out to my man Smirk, who's one of our producers on that. Emilio Torres, um, Chris Applebaum is also a producer on that. Chris, you know, most people know Chris from the Carl's Jr. commercials with Paris Hilton, where the stuff is dripping all over. She's biting burgers and stuff. And uh, uh, my man Francis D'Elia, who um, he was the director of some of the Nightmare on Elm Street um, TV series movies, and also. He directed the um, Rockwell video with Michael Jackson. So those guys are on my team as, as producers and stuff like that. And then we have another movie we're working on uh, about Einstein. Um, and, and that's over at Movie Labs right now. Movie Labs is the, the sort of the hub that funnels movies to the different majors like Paramount, Sony, you know, um, Warner Brothers and places like that. So it's over there now and they're they're looking to see which which studio is going to pick it up. So we're doing that and then like I said, I'm working on something that I cannot reveal right now with DJ Yeller, but it's going to be real cool, man. It's Hell gonna be yeah. surprising. All I, I heard, follow hey, DJ clientele. All I heard out of that was uh, they're coming back to tell us about it later. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's all I so, heard, Doug. You can reach me at, uh, you know, Instagram. That's uh, DJ underscore CLI underscore N underscore T-E-L. Or uh, Twitter. Um, that's also DJ uh, underscore CLI underscore N underscore T-E-L as well. So they can, they can hook so up. So it's like Cly N. Tell. That's right, man. Thank, thank you for coming through, man. We appreciate the the dope yes. combo, man. There's a lot, a lot of stuff that um that we still need to talk about. Plus, um, probably doing a, a whole mix. Oh yeah, sesh. So that's, we that's we definitely promise. gonna set this shit up. So. I love that he wants the whole hour. Yes, takes, I, I want to sweat for a whole hour. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's what I like. Yeah. That's a detox for me right yeah. there. So. Right. You might get a, a Danny California workout video out of the yep, out of the yep. mix. Never know. You know what I'm saying? We'll put that on DVD. Yeah, right. That's right. <laughs> Get it on bsideshow.net. <laughs> hey, we'll, we'll be right. Oh, any shout outs you want to make, my brother? Go ahead. Hey, man, you know, like I said, uh, shout out, you know, Professor uh, Tim Conley, you know, who's uh, uh, been rocking with or Tim. He actually wrote the forward in the book um, for me. And then, uh, you know, Grandmaster Alonzo, of course, and, you know, Dre and, and Yella and Ice Cube and, and all those guys. My brother, Sir Jinx. KD hitting corners. KD doesn't get a lot of recognition, but man, he deserves it. Um, and yeah, you know DJ Speed and, and those cats. So uh, yeah, yes, those my, you know those folks, man. Those are my brothers, and uh, you know it's you know for life. KD, man, I got I got some KD. of the I gotta bust out some of my like old cassettes, like the ones that didn't get jacked. Like I used to have so many, but you know back in the day, some of they were somewhat 
you know, end up disappearing, or I you just have, have the, the you I just have the case. I was just gonna went. say you just have the case, but right, no right. tape in it. But uh, I think I still got some KD stuff too, man. But wow. yeah, man, it hey, was smooth. Thank you, yeah, thank you Ooh. for coming through, man, and, and sprinkling us with the with the stories and everything like that, and what you're up to. Make sure you guys follow. Uh, see what's next. Get the book. Hey, Captain Bill Bill on the Amazon. Book, you know what I'm saying? So I know I'm going to read this shit. So make sure you guys check it out as well, man. And I'm be, but I'll probably put my book review or something up or something like that. We got to post it on Amazon, though. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and a book signing near you. You know, we'll, yep. we'll be doing that too. Oh, that, let's we got do that. that in. Oh, yeah. Hey, because we, we can work something in. out too with with us over here. So yeah, we'll talk dope. about that. Hey, we'll be right back. We'll play a quick video, man. Do our shout outs, and then we'll end with uh, you know, whoever wants to get on the turntables. Let's get it, man. Peace out. Whoever. Love yeah. it. Peace out. Similar sound, cause yo, I wouldn't have it any other way. I'm a hop, skip, and a jump for making my way. Taking nothing but L's I'm like 20,000 leagues out of your league Crafting my flow technique So take a seat, relax your feet While I baptize beats Flows get hotter like when aqua meets with molten lava The cats get salty cause I'm smarter than that bottle of water The tide is riding, I'm beside with tsunami writing Like Mike Tyson with a triton, keep piranhas biting These words from my page, create an ice age Mountain souls on ice, jump suckers with this mic device So all you think that you can rhyme this sick Get off the mic, get off the style, get off the small beat dick I'm on my Kobe shit Joaquin Lee. 
leaving them lost at sea Unfiltered and unchanged, my title still makes waves So nicey like I'm iced tea, calling it lemonade My fluid style's increasing, not equal miles You gas to think you saw, they're taking nothing but L's I'm like 20,000 leagues out of your league Crafting my flow technique, so take a seat Relax your feet while I baptize beats Flows get hotter like when aqua meets with molten lava The cats get salty cause I'm smarter than that bottle of water The tide is riding, I'm Poseidon with tsunami writing Like Mike Tyson with a triton, keep piranhas biting These words from my page, create an ice age Mountain souls on ice, jump suckers with this mic device So all you think that you yeah man, we're doing our thing every every single Monday night, all the way live, B-Side Show.net, tell your peoples about us if they don't know already, but hip hop's going down right here every week, man, that's for sure. Hey, we're, we're going to go into a mix. mix though. Hey man, DJ Hectic's already doing backflips and shit, man. That's right. Yeah man, he's and going... We got to say, DJ Hectic, he's got a podcast called La Clica Podcast. And yes. it's on Mondays as well, and it's two hours before ours. So two hours before us, you can catch them. Yeah, yeah. Wait, go ahead, tell them about it, man. Hey, how's it going? Yeah, man. Hey, guys, thanks for coming through and rocking with us. Appreciate you. Yeah. I'm holding on to the camera here, but yeah, he's doing he's double duty he right wears now. More than one hat, y'all. <laughs> I'm the uh, producer for like Lika podcast. What do you call it? Uh, we talk about music. We make it fun. We like we want our audience to feel like they're part of the conversation. Okay. Nice. That's our main nice. thing right here. Very cool. Very so, cool. So so when can they when when's that available? When we where can they check? We record on Monday, so on Tuesdays, but Sunday depends on the artist that we interview. Okay. We have a lot of guests. So they can connect with you on LaQuicaPodcast.com. Correct. Also on Instagram, on Facebook, and MySpace. Okay. Dope, dope. Yeah, well, we appreciate man. you coming through. Oh, thank we you. We really do. Yes, And yeah. your DJ is a beast. Yeah, yeah. He's about to tear it up. Shout out yeah. to our team, too, man. We got Fooly and Matt Kevin in here doing photos for us. Shay Whitey, our engineer in the back. Shout out to uh, George, who's in here from the Vinyl Life uh, Soul 101 podcast. Yeah, yeah. He'll probably be back. I think he's having a beer at the bar over there or something. That's right. DJ Clips holding us down behind the scenes and all that shit. And, and one more thing I wanted to shout out. We were at the Hip Hop Warrior Movement uh, uh, fest yesterday, yesterday doing the turkey drive. And these guys were there. And I knew it because they're rocking their shirts. So That's shout out right. to Veto over there, man. Veto. We're, we're going to feed with everybody's work. We're going to feed uh, 2,000 people or so uh, homeless that need it for Thanksgiving, man. You so, did that. Yes, man. Real talk. Appreciate you guys. Hip Hop Warrior Movement. So you ready, dog? Let's do this. Let's end the show like this with a live mix, man. DJ Hectic, let's go. Mother, 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 mother.
Separate the weak from the opposite Leap hard to creep in Brooklyn streets It's all nigga, fuck all that bickering beef I can hear sweat trickling down your cheek Your heartbeat sound like Sasquatch's feet Thundering, shaking the concrete Then the shit stop when I fall the clock Maybe Mad shot, mad shot, saw me in the drop, three and a quarter, slaughter, electrical tape around the border. Old school, new school, need to learn though. I burn, baby, burn like disco and furlough. Burn slow like blunts with gay go. Feel more skins than Idaho potato. Niggas know the lyrical molesting is taking place. Fucking with B.I.G. it ain't safe. I make your skin chase. Rashes on the masses, bumps and bruises, blunts and land cruises. Big Papa smash fools, bad fools, niggas mad because I know the cash rules. Everything around me, two block nines. Any motherfucker whispering about mine. And I, uh, Brooklyn's finest, you rewind this, bad boys behind me. <laughs> Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah.